good afternoon, I believe. Let me see. Yes, it's afternoon. So I was tired this morning and I just tried to sleep in, but then that didn't work. And then of course, you know, your day starts. And so we did our therapy visits with the therapy dogs and now I'm here. Now I'm here and I'm excited to get into the word. And um, I think it's okay to break a mold. You know, it's, it's not like God expects you to be a robot. You know, God understands we are frail, we are human, and if we need rest, I think he understands that. I'm not trying to pretend that there's anything different or, you know, I am who I am. So I'm trying to be real and let you guys know what's going on. So that's where I'm at. But um, we, I am ready to get started, so let's go ahead and open in prayer. Lord, I just thank you for this morning, and I thank you for your word. I thank you that you, oh, and it's not morning, it's afternoon, but you know what it is. <laughs> Thank you for your word. Lord, help us to stay focused on you. Help us to love you and help us to take in what you have for us and to share it with others in the opportunities that you give us. And I just thank you and praise you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we're going to start with the wonderful names of our wonderful Lord. And the name that we're going with is Jehovah my God. And it is in Zechariah 14.5. So in Zechariah 14.5, it says, You will flee through this valley, for it will reach across to Azal. Now, the meaning of that's unsure. We don't know where Azal is, but it's saying that they will flee. Yes, you will flee as you did from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. So they understood at the time that this was said what this meant but this is the key point for us is then the lord my god will come and all his holy ones with him jehovah my god and it says with him all the holy ones with him oh we should turn off our volume oh, let's uh, turn that off oh let's turn it off so it's not vibrating sorry okay better so jehovah my god the Lord will come and all his holy ones with him or with you. So let's see what they had to say from the wonderful names of our wonderful Lord. Remember, it was written back in 1925, so this, the writing might be a little bit different than now our days. The self-existing one, seeking ever to reveal himself to his children and to the world that knows him not, is pleased and glorified when the revelation leads our souls to cry, Jehovah my God. If that thing or person who most absorbs our thought is our God, then who is my God today? I think that's very relevant to us today. Whatever we place all our thoughts and actions in is our God. The matchless Jehovah or some other being or created thing unworthy of my trust and worship. Let us not rest until our inmost soul we cry, Jehovah my God. Our inmost soul needs to cry out, Jehovah, my God. It's not about what we look like on the outside, but who and what we are on um, the inside. Because God sees our hearts, right? And our hearts need to be right with him. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. Our, our souls need to cry out, Jehovah, my God. Good stuff. Okay, so we'll put our little bookmark in there for the 119th day of the year and we will go on to our amazing grace for the month of april is the father the son and the holy spirit and the topic of today is the scourge of discouragement the scourge of discouragement so we are in psalms uh 37 verses 16 through 25 it is better to be godly and have little than to be evil and possess much. So though we may be discouraged that we don't have a lot, we need to take hope and joy in the fact that we have a godly life. It's not in what we possess, but what possesses us. What is that that is our driving force? It is better for us to have a little bit, but have a good life and be right with God than to have a lot and have those things that we have possess us. For the strength of the wicked will be shattered, but the Lord takes care of the godly. 
Don't let your faith be shattered for the strength of the wicked will be shattered. What is your strength in today? If your strength is in anything but God, it will be shattered. We're talking about the scourge of discouragement. It causes us to see that the Lord takes care of the godly. Though we may be going through a hard time and we feel like God is not with us, he does understand and he is with us and he does take care of the godly. Day by day, the Lord takes care of the innocent and they will receive a reward that lasts forever. Though we may be in the moment where we do not see that eternal reward that lasts forever, Day by day, the Lord takes care of us. If we are innocent, if we are not in the midst of the things that cause us to draw away from God, but we are drawn near to God. And that makes us innocent according to him and his standards. And so that we will receive the reward, even though we don't see it now. So though you may be facing discouragement, take courage, right? Don't be discouraged, but take courage, right? The, they will survive through hard times. Even in famine, they will have more than enough. So we will go through hard times. God doesn't say there won't be hard times. Don't be discouraged by the hard times because you will have more than enough. More than enough in the times when there is little. God will make sure you're taken care of. Don't let the scourge of discouragement take away your courage right but the wicked will perish the lord's enemies are like flowers in a field they will disappear like smoke the lord's enemies will not last forever they will die here and they will die eternally they are not forever they do not have a lasting impact we are the ones that have eternal life. We are the ones that will live forever. They will pass away. The wicked borrow and never repay, but the godly are generous givers. Are we a generous giver or do we expect everything back to the T? You know, things don't always work out the way we think they should, but they work out according to God's will and perfect plan. So we need to trust that God's got it and be a generous giver, not one that is exacting and not repaying what was given to us. Those blessed by the Lord will inherit the land, but those cursed by him will die. Those blessed by the Lord will inherit the land. How are we blessed by the Lord? When we have fellowship with him, when we are in his word, when we are in prayer, when we are hearing from him from his word, when we are talking to him in prayer, when we are in a Bible-believing church so we can grow, and when we are able to use our gifts to his honor and glory, we will be blessed and we will inherit the land. So the, the blessing isn't just for eternity. The, the blessing is for here and now. We will inherit the land that we are living in now. God will give us the land that we are in so that we can be a blessing, right? And he will increase that land. But those cursed by him will die. We There is no life in for those that are cursed by God. Those cursed by God have no eternal life. And we need to understand that even though they seem like they're getting their, their blessing now, their, their blessing is, is a momentary. It is, it is not going to last eternal. They will die. The steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. He delights in every detail of their lives. Good morning. Good afternoon, Lori. Glad that you're here. The steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. He delights in every detail of their lives. Do we realize that God really is interested and cares about every detail of our lives? That's the God we serve. The steps of the godly are directed by the Lord. We make plans, but God directs our steps. We set our course in motion, but God directs the path. He delights in every detail of our lives, yet we only want to share the big and important things with him. We don't ever want to share the little things with him. We, we think that that's insignificant and we don't want to bother him with it, but he cares about every detail of our lives. And here's the key verse, though they stumble, they will not fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. God holds us by the hand. We stumble, we will stumble. We will fail, we will fall short, we will not measure up, we will not be what we 
we want to be and we will not succeed in everything that we do and we will let people down and people will not be happy all the time. We can't make everybody happy. We will stumble, but we will not fall. God makes sure that we do not fall because he holds our hand. We will not fall because he is holding our hand. He is reaching out and he keeps us from slipping. Once I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the godly forsaken nor seen their children begging for bread. God has a plan and a purpose. God will meet our need. God reaches out and makes sure that we are provided for because he loves us, because he cares. So remember the key verse, though they stumble, they will not fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. God holds you by the hand today. God loves you. God cares for you. God has reached out his hand to you. All we have to do is take it. So I hope that blesses you today. And I thank you for listening in and um, I hope you have a very blessed day. Thanks for joining in, Randy.